Hi, and welcome back to the C Sharp Beginner Series for the Stride Game Engine. In this tutorial, we learn all about removing entities from the scene. As you can see, I've opened up the Removing Entities tutorial from the C Sharp Beginner Template project. I have this entity selected in my scene. It has a script attached to it called Remove Entities Demo. And this script references the entity to clone, which is this object here placed on the table. In the previous tutorial, we already learned how to clone entities, existing entities, and how to add them to the scene. And that's what I've done for this tutorial. So I'm making two clones stored in clone one and clone two. I gave them a different name. And then I scaled them up and the second clone was scaled down a little. Let's first see how this looks when we start our tutorial scene. Our game has started. Let's go to removing entities. And this is the scene that we're currently looking at. So this is our original entity. And then that clone one is this big guy over here. And this itsy tiny little model to the right, that is clone number two. So how can we remove those entities from the scene? So the first thing to notice that we've done in this script right here is that we've added these clones in specific ways to our existing level. So the first way is that we've added our clone one to the scene itself. So our entity, the, where the remove entities demo is, is attached to, it has a scene reference and that scene has a list of entities and that's where we've added that clone one. Clone two, on the other hand, was not added through this scene object, but instead was added as a child of our current entity. So if we go back to the Stride Game Studio, then clone one, will be at the exact same level as the camera and entity to clone. And clone two will be a child of removing entities demo. And this difference is important when you start removing entities from your scene. Let's try and remove the first clone from our scene. One way to do that is by saying entity.scene, getting the entities list, followed by the remove method. In between the parentheses, we have to fill in the entity that we want to remove, which is in this case clone one. If we were to copy this line, and if we would try to do the exact same thing with clone number two, then this second particular line will not do anything. Because when we use this remove method, it will only remove the entities that are on its first layer, if you will, of that particular scene. So only the camera, the entity to clone, and the remove entities demo entity. But since clone two is a child, this will not do anything. So the first one will get removed, but the second line will not. Let's set a breakpoint right after that second line has happened to see what the state of all the variables is once we've performed this update. We click on removing entities once more. There's our breakpoint. And let's see what is actually part of our scene right now. If we go to entities of our scene object, notice how there are three entities, the camera, removing entities demo, and entity to clone. But clone one is no longer there because we've already removed it. However, clone two is still part of our scene. It's just a child of the removing entities demo. If we open up this entity and go to its children, notice how clone two is still there. So one last time, this remove method that is part of the scene.entities is only used for the entities that are on the first level or that are the direct children of a scene object. So how do we remove that clone 2 from our scene? Luckily, this is very easy to do as well. There are various ways that we can achieve that. And one of the first ways that we can do that is by saying entity and then using the remove child method 
and then simply passing in that entity that we have a reference to, which is the clone2. Alternatively, we could also say clone2 dot transform dot parent is null. In the end, this will achieve the exact same thing as remove child. Let's think about what is happening here. Clone2 has a parent object, which is our current entity, and if that is set to null, then our clone2 no longer has a reference to which scene it belongs, so it doesn't get rendered anymore. For now, let's just comment out this line and run our game again to see what's going on. Let's start our scene. Our breakpoint has been hit. And if we would go to entity.scene, notice how we still have our regular three entities. And if we open the children of our removing entities demo, notice how it no longer has any children because this line, line 36 in this case, has removed that clone number two. Now you might think, okay, we're done right now. Well, that's not entirely true because there's one thing that we forgot in this case. We may have removed our entities from the scene and they may no longer be visible. If I would just continue my game, then both entities, both clones have been removed, but they still exist in memory. As a matter of fact, if I would set my breakpoint back and if I would hover over clone one, notice how clone one still exists. It's still in memory. So if we want to get rid of this clone one, we have to do something about that. Luckily, this is fairly easy to do as well. All we have to do is say clone one is null. Obviously, for the clone two, we have to do the exact same thing. And that's all there is to it about removing entities from our scene in various ways. In the next tutorial, we learn how to get the mouse input from a user.